Schneiderweiss Aventius Icebox. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got a very special one here today and this is from the Schneider Weiss Brewery in, from Bavaria and this is their Aventinus, or Aventinus I should say, Ice Bock. And this is a really special beer and the reason being is Ice Bock is a beer that, or a beer style that was founded by mistake. So the premise of Ice Bock is the beer is brewed it is allowed to lager or ferment in the tanks, but it's frozen and or partially frozen because the water in the beer will freeze. That is removed and it leaves a higher concentration of all the other ingredients and the alcohol as well. What you end up with is a very, very intense beer. And this beer has been pioneered by the brewers in Bavaria, notably in Franconia and it's been brewed since the turn of the last century and it's been brewed ever since. And now I've tried Icebock from the Kornbacher Brewery, they're from Franconia, and I did try to get hold of this one because I love everything Schneiderweiss do, they're one of my favourite German brewers, uh, certainly for wheat beer. I, I, I firmly believe that they brew the best wheat beer in the world, or best German style wheat beer in the world. And this, of course, is a wheat beer, but it's an, a vice bock. Even though they don't say it, it's a wheat ice bock. And of course, Schneider Weiss are renowned for brewing wheat beer, hence the name Weiss. Of course, that is Weiss beer, is what German wheat beer is known as. And they've got a fantastic history. They've been going since 1872. And they basically revived the style of wheat beer because it had gone out of fashion in Germany and this lot revived that style and they've been going ever since and they brew some fantastic stuff now don't get me wrong there are some very very good wheat beer brewers in germany notably notably weinstefana hacker shaw basically from bavaria they're the best ones and they really do give schneider weiss a run for their money but i think schneider weiss do the best beer out of a lot of them and this one i've been trying as i say i've been trying to get older for ages I'll go over the price in a minute, but for those that are interested, this is tap nine. You know that all the Schneider Weiss beers have tap numbers on them, and uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the the famous icebox style that has been pioneered in this region of Germany. Completely, f the style was completely found by mistake. They used to transport certainly a Schneider Weiss did. They used to transport doppel box all over the sort of country back in the last century up you know the early 1900s there was no temperature control so during the winter some of the beer would freeze they'd remove the ice and people were, tr were flabbergasted at the intense flavors that were coming from the beer once the water had been removed and hence icebox was born so without further ado let's get into this beer Right, 330ml bottle. It is 12%. This is a strong one. And it's 15 IBUs on the international bittering unit scale. Now, that would appear to be very sweet indeed. And it is because the hops are really sort of immaterial in this. The big thing that's in here is the alcohol, the yeast, and the malt, and the wheat as well in this particular one. There are other ice box, of course, they don't have wheat in. The full, uh, the Kornbacher one, as I say, that's on the channel if you want to review that. And if you want to look at the history of Schneider Weiss, I've 
I've gone over them in all the other Schneider Vice beers that I reviewed and also in the history of Vice beer. So have a look at that if you're interested in the brewery. But as I say, this is a pretty hefty one. Now it's normally drunk out of what they call a balloon glass. And it's basically a cross between a chalice, a Belgian chalice like this, which is what I'm gonna drink out of, and a wheat beer glass. So it's got the bulbous head at the top and the thin construction of a wheat beer glass. I haven't got one of them, unfortunately. I am not gonna buy one just so as I can drink one beer and say that I'm drinking out the right glass. So I'm gonna put it into one of these glasses. Now this is a Leffer glass. I really don't like Leffer, but I don't like anything Leffer do, or should I say AB and Bev, same thing. But I really like this glass. So that's the reason I've kept this. Anyway, let's stop gassing and let's get this beer into my glass. Cannot wait for this. This has been a long time in coming. Oh, do you know what? I can smell that from here. And I think that is gonna, yeah. It, it, it's just fruit, just intense fruit, like plum and dates and black cherry. Now I'm gonna give this an aggressive pour because at 12% that head is not going to last long. There it is in the glass and the flavours and the aromas are just wafting out. God. Strong ethanol but big fruit, that's the main thing I'm getting. So it's like, it's like plum, date, there's some clove there as well. It does smell a little bit of Belgian, I'm getting some, quite a bit of banana and clove from this as you would expect from a, a wheat beer. Oh it smells so good though really good. There's the cap if you're interested. So you know, I've got to ride my face to get that in, into focus. There you go. Right, before the head dissipates, let's get it down the hatch. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Oh, burning ethanol. <laughs> wow. There's like raisins, dates, sultanas. Mmm, little bit of almond. Or is that marzipan? It's one of the two. I'm not sure, it actually tastes like marzipan, but of course marzipan is made from almonds. You're getting that flavour in there as well. Just notice that just now. Really nice. There is a little bit of clove, a little bit of banana. Alcohol burning, or ethanol burning, and in the mouth, and as I swallow as well. This is very, very intense. This is not to be taken lightly. Oh, it's just super rich. Really full bodied. Big caramel malt on there too. But that's big, the malt is big, but then the other flavors on top, the fruit is just dominant in this. That is what this is all about. It's about the big fruit, dark fruit, intense dark fruit. And I thought the Kornbacher ice block was good. This just fucking blows it out of the water. This is insane when it comes to flavour. Oh, just, you know, even just holding your nose up to it. The, I, I really can't emphasise the powerful aroma that comes from this beer. If you're a fan of Belgian quadruples, you would love this. This would be a unique twist on a Belgian quad. Now I know they're two styles, they're, oh, sorry, they're, I know they're two different styles, but they do have a lot in common. Big ethanol, big, big fruity flavors, clove, banana, caramel malt, they're all there. And 
this really has got it in abundance. It's just superb. But one thing I will say, it's very intense. I think if you keep necking this and necking this, then you, I think you're gonna miss out. I think you should take a mouthful, savor the flavor on the palate, and as it goes down, just, you know, even now I can feel the alcohol not burning, just warming. And it's, it's giving me hiccups and wind as well. <laughs> this really is an experience. It's one of them beers that comes along every now and again. You get a, you know, you, you're at the extreme end of good beer. Now, I've mentioned this before, and, you know, high alcohol beers, they are, they're an acquired taste for starters. Some people just don't like that big ethanol flavour, which is fair enough. I get that. Some people don't like what they perceive to be like a syrupy type flavour. Well, that could be a lot of things. That could be the malt. That could be the yeast that's giving that. And some people, you know, just don't like them full stop because they're so strong. But you are at the extreme end of strong beers. Now, as I said before in other videos, these aren't the strongest beers in the world. I think I've tried the other one, the Swiss beer, the Saniclas, I think it's called. I think that was 13%. They were the strongest beers. And then Brewdog just went stupid and done a beer that was 56% or 65%. And I just think, well, if you're gonna if you're gonna drink that, then you're drinking a beer that's been brewed by people who I don't think have given a shit about what it tastes like. They just wanna be up there to get their name in the record book with the highest amount of alcohol. And I imagine it doesn't taste nice. And I'm saying that without having tasted it, but I'm fairly confident, it just stands to reason. I know if I was a brewer and I was doing my utmost to get into the record books, all that would matter with the record was, would be the record. It wouldn't be what the beer tasted like. However, with Schneiderweiss and the other Icebox brewers and the quadruple brewers as well, of course, it's all about the flavour and how it tastes, which is what any good brewer would be doing, not playing stupid fucking games like Brewdog. Anyway, let's get back to this beer. It's super smooth, but it is, it does have a lot of bite to it. When I say bite, I mean alcohol bite. You really can taste that in every mouthful but I love it. I think it's really nice. But I get that this would be an acquired taste. Not everybody would like this super intensely flavoured, high alcohol, specialist type beer. But personally, I love it. I think it's fantastic. So what's the verdict on Aventius Icebock? Not for the faint hearted. And if you can get hold of it, then I would urge caution. If you like your Belgian triples, you like your Belgian quadruples, or you like your Belgian strong brown ales, you will love this. If you like your doppel box, I would imagine that you would like this. If you're not a fan of that high alcohol, big ethanol, slightly syrup, what you may perceive to be syrupy flavors, then I would avoid this because I don't think you're gonna like it. However, I absolutely love this. I love the intensity. I love the flavors. I love the aroma that comes from it. And I just love everything about it. And Icebox is a unique style. It's a rare style. And it does have certain caveats when you're trying it. You know, you, you have to be in the mindset that you're gonna be drinking a high alcohol beer you're gonna have high ethanol flavors in it. You're gonna have big fruit flavors in it, big malt. Basically the flavors are gonna be turned up to 11. And if you don't like that, if you want something easy drinking, then I would avoid this. So having said that, my personal take on this is that this is probably the best ice block I've tasted so far. And I'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10. But it's a 10 out of 10 with caution because I do get that this may not be for everyone. And I'd urge you to try it, 
However, and here is another snag that you may come up against when you're buying these sort of beers. Now I got this from Trembling Madness. They're a beer shop in the People's Republic of York. <laughs> in York, from York, no less. I have bought from them before. And this, I bought a load of German beer, and I bought a load of Belgian beer, and I bought some British beer from them as well. And it wasn't cheap. So, again, I want to reiterate, here is my receipt with all the prices on. I don't know if you can see that or not. I do not get beer for nothing. A, a subscriber was saying I'm a fucking paid shill because I'm getting all my beer for nothing and I'm paid to say nice things about them. I most certainly am not. So get that idea out of your head. Anyway, I was going to tell you how much this costs. Uh, 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 uh. Where is it? Is that it there? No, no it's not there. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. £4.25. Ask yourself, do you want to pay £4.25 for a beer that you potentially may not like? I would recommend it. I love it. I love the intense flavours, but I do get that not everyone wants to pay £4.25 for a beer. So I'm with you on that one. I do get it. So there's your, there's your word of caution. But personally, I love it. I think it's brilliant. And for me, it's a 10 out of 10 all day long. And I would recommend it. But only if you like them strong style beers like the Belgian quads and the British old ale, barley wine type beers. So there you go. And remember, beer is working class champagne.